Okay, so this is the second of the pictures I've selected from the shoot in Video 005 at uh, Llyna Duarchen near Rhydddi in Snowdonia. It's very washed out, no contrast at all. It's an extremely long lens. Uh, it's 140 mil, so it's the full telephoto on my um, uh, kit lens. But it's a, it's a DX camera, so uh, we're looking at actually um, 200, what would that be, 210 mm, um, ISO 100 f9, and I got 1 400th of a second. Um, but don't be fooled by this, I think we can, we can really do something with this picture. Use my standard preset, that grassy patch here needs to be pretty warm, but we'll get most of that warmth that I'll be looking for there um, from some curves adjustment I think in uh, in Photoshop so for now we'll leave it there um, I definitely want more magenta in this there we are that's that's better the trouble is with these clouds is I find if you don't lift the magenta a little bit they look brown and smoky I'm taking some license here um, but it's my picture and I don't care so let's pull the highlights right down bring the shadows up but not too much I'm not trying to recover lots of detail in the shadows I actually want the shadows to remain as shadows because it's that shaft of sunlight that I'm looking to emphasize so we'll pull the whites up and get some more intensity in the blacks and the blacks can go a long way down and you see now we've, we've really got ourselves some contrast um, whereas previously uh, it was looking pretty flat so that's good happy with that now I'm going to crop into this uh, so uh, I'm happy with this side here but I want to crop up there to where this line intersects that and you'll notice that by doing that just another slight adjustment there and you'll see now I've, I've got the train exactly on the on the thirds lines I'm not a huge uh, oh everything must be rule of thirds or everything must have leading lines and all that sort of stuff I don't really put my pictures in competitions I'm not interested in people judging me or not judging me so uh, but that is just a happy coincidence on that one okay so the next thing we need to do is a grad filter to do something with this sky now this filter uh, is going to be angled and it's going to be quite a sharp it's not going to be particularly gradual that's what i'm looking for there uh, what's that that's a one stop darker exposure that's good that is much more like what I was seeing when I was taking this shot it really was very threatening looking on the top of the mountain uh, I almost felt sorry for the walkers but well no not that sorry um, so the little shaft of sunlight I thought to myself you want to be making the most of that that's all you're going to get I'm going to be quite cavalier with dehaze on this and you see now suddenly We've got this really threatening sky and for the sky I'm also going to add in some more magenta tint not a vast amount just enough there to really give it that threatening look um, so yeah I'm, I'm really happy with that that looks good I'm gonna just pull that down a little bit because otherwise this area here without any uh, darkening on the exposure will will look a bit silly so I'll, I'll take the hit on the exposure down here on that I could spend hours using an erase brush to take it out of this area but it's not having a huge impact on it um, so I'm quite happy with that um, what I can do now uh, is go back to my base exposure and pull that up not too much just a little I'm going to uh, darken down these areas uh, and these top corners of the sky with quite a severe vignette on this particular image 
we'll give it a bit of clarity and a little bit of extra contrast. Now, some vibrance. Actually, I want to be quite aggressive with this. I'm going to get up as far as, what, 45. Wouldn't normally be anywhere near that. And I'm also going up on the saturation to about 10. Again, normally I dial down the saturation. Um, but as I was saying, the reason for that is that's what gives me the intensity in this sunlit area because it's having next to no effect on the areas around it, so all the threatening dark skies. Um, but now it's really brightened up that sunlight area and given that the, the emphasis and contrast that I was looking for. Let's come down to our saturation, hue saturation luminance panel. Uh, what I want to do here is I just want to selectively saturate that. Yeah, that's better. You see how suddenly that's punched it up. Not, not a vast amount, just, just like that. That gives us what I was looking for in terms of the, the sunlight cutting through that tiny little hole in the clouds suddenly lights it up and the rest of it looks like Armageddon's about to break out. I'm happy with that. I might just give the yellows a little more luminance. Yeah, that'll do it. So finally, on the effects, we'll pull in our vignette, and as, as you can see, that's darkening everything else down except that area that is, is illuminated here. Uh, and also, by darkening down these, these corners, it's emphasizing this, this row of silhouetted people walking up the mountain. They're minuscule. I'm willing to bet you can't even see them on this video, but there are dozens of silhouettes along this horizon line. So we will pop out to Photoshop, Command J. Black and white, and we'll go filter other high pass. Now let's have a look. This actually can take quite a bit of sharpening. I might just, just go completely mental and go for four pixel radius. Why not? Let's have a look. If we don't like the look of it, we can always go back to three pixel. But yeah, I thought so. That's perfect. So the last thing I'm going to do with this now is put a curves adjustment layer on. Uh, where are we? Curves. Okay. Uh, but before I actually manipulate the curve, I'm going to uh, put an apply image mask on the curves layer. Um, and if we look at the mask there, you can see that actually it's not very selective, but I, I really only want to impact the, the very highlight area. So what we do is we go to image, apply image again, and see how that's now darkened down the mask. And what that means is that only these lighter areas are going to be impacted by the curves adjustment. So we'll just go back to our colors, select the curves adjustment. I only want the red channel. And you see now that because of the uh, we've applied the mask, the only part of the red channel that's visible is right at the highlights. And there actually isn't much room to manoeuvre, but you'd be surprised at how much effect you can have. I put a point on there, and you see how it's put that red tint on this area. But also, this has all now gone purple because there is still some red appearing on that. So what we'll do is we'll put another point lower down the curve and pull that back down to the neutral. And we're going to need another point there to put it back up onto the line. So you see what we now have is it's pretty much, another point there I think, pretty much following the linear line and it's only this very top section that's being pulled up. It is subtle. Um, I'm willing to bet that you'll probably struggle to see that uh, was I switch it on and off, uh, but it is having the impact. And that's it. I'm happy with that picture, and I think that that is quite an interesting, an interesting image. Do you know what? I might even just pop that in my local camera club's monthly competition. I hope you found it interesting. Um, 
and uh, the next video you'll see me in, I'm back at um, St. Quivan's Church in the Sea uh, for a daytime photo shoot because I, I'm, try, uh, I'm trying to get it isolated at high tide because uh, it actually looks quite dramatic then. Um, don't know how it's going to turn out, so join me for that and we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching. Take care.